بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ما بعد my brothers and sisters some friends of mine sent me this uh, little you know uh, poem <coughs> which uh, says that today is the 17th of Ramadan, 1400th anniversary of the year <coughs> of the Battle of Badr. And with that, there is a share of the story. You are a mu'min, 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 you are a If you are a mu'min, if you are a mu'min, do not fear the uh, strength and the numbers of the enemy. The, the one who helped the people of Badr, that God, that Khuda, that Allah is still there. So I remind myself and you that... This poem, the first misra, the first line, is a condition. It is something which is describing a condition. The rest of the poem is based on that condition. And that condition is, if you are a mu'min, tu jo mu'min hai, to agar mu'min nahi hai, to phir baaki sab bhi iske, uh, isse jo hai, wo, uska koi taluk nahi If you are not a mu'min, then the rest of it will not apply. Today, this is our problem. Our problem is, that Allah is the same. What has changed is, we have changed. We no longer have the connection that the Badriyin, the people of Badr had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we want what happened in the case of Badr to happen for us, we have to have the state of Iman and Yaqeen, the state of obedience, the state of, of uh, uh, service, the state of uh, subservience, the state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which the people of other had. And that is the key thing. right? If we don't have that condition, if we don't have that situation of the people of other, then it would be very foolish and very uh, unrealistic to expect uh, that what happened for them will happen for us. What happened for them was for a reason. If we have that reason, then we can legitimately and confidently expect the same help to come to our aid. But when that reason is not there, then expecting the aid to come, expecting the help to come itself is unreasonable. Illa mashallah. We are like today a house which is all wired up with all the technology in the world and there's a transformer next door to the house but there's no connection between the transformer and the house. So this house will remain in darkness even though that transformer is generating electricity which is powering up the whole city but this house will remain in darkness because the house is not connected to the transformer. That's our situation. We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no doubt about this. There is the same Allah of Badr is Allah of today. Because there is only one Allah. And He is Hayyul Qayyum. Allah is forever. What has changed is our connection. Now, this is both good news and bad news. The bad news, of course, is that as long as we continue to remain in our state of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we cannot expect the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come. But the good news is that if we change our ways, then the help of Allah will come, inshallah. So today when we look at difficulties and say that Badr ke zamane mein jo Allah ne madad kiye thi, wo Allah aaj bhi hai, wo sahi hai. Magar jab aap nafarmani karte hain Allah ki, us waqt bhi wo Allah hai. Us waqt nahi badla Allah. Jab aap haram khate hain, kamate hain, us waqt bhi wo Allah hai. Jab aap kisi par zahadati karte hain, us waqt bhi wo Allah hai. 
So the thing to understand is that today we want to remind ourselves and say that, oh, you see, when I'm in difficulties, I should not worry because the Allah who helped the people of Badr, he is still the same God. He is still the same Allah. The answer is yes, he is still the same Allah. But he is still the same Allah when we were, when we are disobeying him. He is still the same Allah when we earn haram and eat haram. He is still the same Allah when we refuse to pray. He is still the same Allah when we are oppressing somebody and taking away their, taking away their uh, rights, violating their rights. Right? The same Allah. So how come we pay no heed, no attention to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are doing all these things? Right? We follow the shaitan, we follow our nafs. And then when we get into trouble, we say, Oh, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help me. How will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us? And this is like the, the famous hadith where this man came and he was praying and he raises his hands to the heavens and he says, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, His clothing is haram, his food is haram, his earning is haram. How can he call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and expect to be hurt? Right? So, I remind myself and you, the purpose of Ramadan is to remind us about this. Is to remind us that we have a Lord, that we have Allah. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed this way of life for us, for our benefit. Because He is, was Samad. He is completely and totally free from any need. So, when He prescribed a way of life for us, we live that with great joy because we know that the one who prescribed it for us knows what is better for us than we could ever know. He knows what is best for us and he knows that much better than we can ever know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed his life for us for our benefit. Our benefit in this world and the next. As I was saying yesterday, the beauty of the prescription of this life in this world is that if we live our lives the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us and prescribed for us, then not only will this be good for our akhir, of course, inshallah, but this is good for us in this dunya also. Because if you have somebody who is living, who is a just person, who is a compassionate person, who is a friendly person, who is a kind person, who is a helpful person, right, who goes out of their way to be good to people, who stands up for other people's rights, who does not violate the rights of other people and so on. You're looking at a person who is going to be extremely popular, extremely influential, very well liked, very loved, beloved of everybody in society also. So what is wrong with that? What is wrong with being the most beloved, the most respected, the most influential person in society? Nothing wrong with that, right? How do you get there? by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the bonus is that this is also good for us in the akhirah. This is what Rasulullah was. He was the most beautiful human being on the face of the earth. He was the most beloved, the most influential, the most uh, looked up to role model for people and so on and so forth. And obviously, even if you look at his life purely from a worldly perspective, it was a beautiful life. Who doesn't want to live a life like that with those, with those kinds of uh, you know, powerful uh, returns. And then in the Akhirah, we have the Rida of Allah, inshallah. The pleasure of Allah, inshallah. So I remind myself and you that when we quote these things and we say, oh, the same God, yes, the same God, there's no doubt about that. There is one God. But what changes is our connection with that God. If we live our lives in a way where we are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we benefit from this connection. The way to be connected with Allah is to obey Allah. It's not simply to sing praises and nasheeds and hamd and salah. No. It is to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our lives. And to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every state of being. To obey Allah when we are happy, to obey Allah when we are sad, to obey Allah when we are... Um, when we have power, to obey Allah when we have no power. To obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every state of being, in every way that we are. And then we have, when we have that connection, of course, then life will be beautiful. And, and our lives will get illuminated with this, by this connection. 
but only and only if you have the connection and the way to get the connection is obedience the love for anyone is expressed in ways that are appropriate for that relationship you don't express love for your wife the same way as you express love for your mother you don't express love for your children the same way as you express love for your wife or your mother and so on the love for each is expressed according to that the demands of that person the demands of that relationship not the person relationship and therefore the love for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expressed through obedience to him jalla jalaluhu the love for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is expressed through ittiba of his sunnah the following is sunnah so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people who are obedient who are muttaqun who are muhsinun who do ihsan and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore then to be for us and in our corner wa sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barakatuh